What you're about to see and hear will give you an entirely new appreciation for what's possible. William Henry Gates III was born on October 28, 1955, in Seattle, Washington. At only 13, Gates and friend Paul Allen began experimenting with a school teletype computer. Bill invented an early tic-tac-toe game. He tried to work on a war game. He and Paul went on to start to develop companies to actually track traffic patterns, create the whole scheduling for the school. So he played, he learned, and he grew. While attending Harvard in 1974, Gates read an article about the Altair microcomputer that led him to drop out of college and develop software. In 1975, Gates and Paul Allen founded Microsoft. Bill Gates and Paul Allen realized that what the manufacturers of the Altair would need more than anything else was programs to sell to users who would then use those programs to do calculations. They started writing those programs even before they saw the Altair. In 1980, Microsoft created the operating system MS-DOS for IBM. One year later, Microsoft boasted a revenue of $16 million. When IBM, the computer giant, decided to get into the personal computer game, they needed an operating system for their computers, and they decided to license it. Bill Gates went and found a tinier other company that had what IBM needed. He purchased the company, licensed DOS to IBM, and rode that wave to fortune. Microsoft launched its first retail version of Windows in 1985 and boasted more than 25 million licensed users by 1993. That same year, Gates was named the richest man in America and held the title for 18 years. I could tell you more about Windows Media Technology, but it wouldn't compare to the sheer impact of experiencing it. In the 90s when you said PC, it was Microsoft. PC was Microsoft, everything about it. And there were other PC makers, Dell and uh, HP and some, many, many others. One thing that ran across all of them was the Microsoft operating system. In 1998, the U.S. Department of Justice filed a lawsuit against Microsoft for unlawfully monopolizing computer software markets but the suit was eventually settled. Originally, a judge did find that Microsoft was a monopolist and even ruled that the company would be broken apart. But on appeal, almost all of those judgments were either taken away or so limited that it was relatively painless for the company. With his wife, he established the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to focus on global health, development, and education. By 2002, Business Week named them the most generous philanthropists in America. They're working on vaccinations, they're working on schools, they're working on all kinds of really important areas of AIDS. And they're being very focused about how you solve problems and how you change philanthropy. Gates retired from Microsoft in 2008. But in 2011, Forbes magazine ranked him as the world's fifth most powerful person in recognition of his impact and active leadership at the Gates Foundation. Bill is a figure of paramount importance in the development of the software industry and really in the development of the internet. I think he's certainly a visionary. He's been a very creative businessman, and I think he really has changed the world for the better.